Hi everyone and welcome back to the shack where we're all up in the air owing to getting our house on the market and preparing for a move and that's meant a whole lot of stuff going into temporary storage leaving little old me with not much to tinker about with and although I've got a nice project on the go with the QL I'm waiting on a Raspberry Pi which I've ordered but it hasn't yet arrived so I trawled through my outstanding stuff to look at list and realised I hadn't given this an airing. It's a Versa 64 car by BWAC, yes the same BWAC that produced the mainboard I used to build my own Commodore 64 last year. This Versa 64 car promises to be quote a modern easy to use cartridge development board for Commodore 64 and Commodore 128 hobbyists and hackers. So let's take a look. Here at the shack we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video PCB Way. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices and it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding, PCB Way also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. The Versa 64 cart cartridge supports up to a W27 C512 64K EEPROM, which can hold multiple 8K and 16K ROM images, and can present these to the 64 as either standard or Ultimax cartridges. There's a bit of thought that needs to go into what images you put onto your EEPROM and particularly in what order which we'll go over in a little while. If you have multiple ROM images on your EEPROM then you'll need to configure the cartridge so it knows how to present them to the 64 or 128. That configuration is handled via these DIP switches here and a couple of jumper settings over here. And if you're going to be regularly changing your mind and swapping things about then you'll need to become familiar with how those settings work and it's not particularly intuitive but I guess it's fine once you know what you're doing. If however you want to set this up as one particular cartridge such as a diagnostic or fast loader then you can override those switches and jumpers by just soldering straight across these bridges here effectively creating a permanent configuration setting. In this case you only need the EEPROM itself and a 100 nanofarad capacitor and you've got yourself a cartridge. Nice if you want to build up a library of cartridges with your favourite stuff readily available for instant loading. This particular cartridge has all of the settings at our disposal so let's go through the process of putting some ROM images on there and getting the configuration set up. First of all we'll need some cartridge files, I'm sure you're all clever enough to locate these and of course I'm going to assume you legally own the originals. You'll also need a copy of the C64 Vice emulator as it contains a handy utility for converting CRT cartridge files into their raw binary format ready to put on the EEPROM. There's a link to Vice in the description of the video. So once we've got Vice installed we'll need the cartconv.exe file from the bin folder and we'll need some CRT files that we want to put on the EEPROM. We'll keep the originals here just in case and copy them to a working directory where we've already put the cartconv executable. Looking at the file details we can see that all of the CRT files are 16K and 4 times 16 k is 64K so that will fit on our EEPROM. We can use the cartconv program to verify this and other information about the cartridge such as the hardware type, standard cartridge or Ultimax and importantly the size, in this case hex 4000 which is 16k. If you're mixing your cartridge sizes on the EEPROM just remember to group your cartridges into logical 16k blocks i.e. two 8k cartridges then a 16k and then four 8ks will be just fine but an 8k followed by a 16k won't work. So now we know the sizes and types of our cartridges we need to convert them from the CRT format to a binary format that we can load into the EEPROM. 
To do this, we simply use the cartconv program again and use the hyphen i parameter for the input CRT file and the hyphen o parameter for the output bin file and cartconv does its stuff. When we've converted all of our CRT files to bin files, we can see why this is needed. The CRT files are actually just over 16k each as they carry some information about the cartridge itself. Cartconv strips out this extra information and leaves us with a 16,384 byte file, dead on 16k. The next step is to combine these four 16k files into one 64k file and we can do this using the windows copy command and using the slash b parameter to indicate a binary copy. This leaves us with a single 64k file ready for our EEPROM. The final part of the process is to actually program the EEPROM, so we'll load up our MiniPro software and the first thing we need to do is to ensure we have the right EEPROM device selected. So let's look for the W27 C512 28 pin dip, there we go. Next we'll load up the 64k combined.bin file we created. Insert the EEPROM into the programmer and lock it in. And then we'll start the programming. Okay, that's done. So let's remove it from the programmer and pop it into the Versa 64 cart. As we always say, make sure the notch in the chip lines up with the notch in the socket so we know the chip is in the right way round. And then we'll need to set the dip switches and the jumpers. Starting with those jumpers, we're going to set this block over here to 16K, which is telling the Versa 64 cart that we only have 16K images on our EEPROM, rendering dip switch 5 redundant, because you only need 2 bits to choose one of 4 images. 8 images would need 3 bits, dip switches 3, 4 and 5, so this jumper would then be set to switch. ROM L and ROM H are used to control the chip select signals for an 8K address space. These are required to locate the EEPROM content within the address space of the C64. We only have 16K cartridges on here and if you populate the 16K jumper it sets both ROM L and ROM H and saves you a jumper at the same time. Our standard 16K cartridges require us to set the XROM and gain dip switches to low, which is actually the on setting, and we should be good to pop this in and give it a test. To test this we'll use our Ultimate 64 Elite and we'll set dip switches 3 and 4 to low, which should select bank 0 on the EEPROM, which if memory serves should be chop lifter. So let's power up and see what we get. Well, that seems to work as expected, so let's power off and then flip the dip switches 3 and 4 to low and high respectively, which should then make the C64 look at address space hex 4000, which is where decathlon should be on the EEPROM. Let's power back up. And yes, that also seems to work. It's always a nice feeling when something just works as it's supposed to without having to troubleshoot and I'm already thinking about all of the useful diagnostics I can put on this cartridge to help troubleshoot C64s in the future. Let's just try one more time to make sure we get consistent results. So we'll now flip the dip switches 3 and 4 to high and low respectively making the C64 look at address space hex 8000 which is where Robotron should be located power on and yes we have a fully working Versa 64 cart. So there we have it, a simple and cheap way of building up a nice permanent library of cartridges or a handy and versatile multi-cart solution to keep lots of stuff at hand and ready to go. As I said, only a quick episode and sorry for being away for a bit, might be a bit sporadic as we up sticks and move to new horizons, so please bear with us. As it happens, the Raspberry Pi I ordered for the QL project has turned up today as I finished editing this episode, so at least that's something else I can crack on with. 
please do the usual and do all the nice YouTube friendly stuff, like, subscribe, etc. And please leave your comments so we've got something to engage with other than packing boxes. See you soon and until next time in the Retro Shack, it's goodbye from me.